Hey there, CPO here, and today I have two awesome products to show you from Factor 55. The brand new Splicer, okay, and the ProLink, which has become a lot of people's favorite. I'll show you uh, the benefits of these two, but more importantly, I'll show you how they differ. So if you're trying to decide which product you want to buy, you'll know which one might be best for you. And if you're using a hook like this that came with your winch cable probably, you're going to want to ditch that for one of these. It's about time uh, to maybe upgrade my rope too. Let me see what I can do about that. Custom splice to the rescue. So this is the Factor 55 Pro Link. This allows you to leverage either a traditional steel winch cable or a synthetic winch line. It connects directly to the eye or the thimble in your winch line and is uh, done so using this titanium double shear pin. Once you have it connected, it allows you to attach to whatever your recovery point is using a standard D-ring shackle. So this is compatible with both roller and Haas fair leads and has this protective rubber cover to protect your fair lead. Now this is the splicer. This is a new design patent pending from Factor 55 and it basically replaces the existing eye or uh, thimble in your synthetic winch line. It allows you to feed the synthetic winch line directly into the splicer. This simplifies connection, removes a lot of moving parts. It also has this integrated rubber protective pad. And just like the ProLink I just showed you, this is a closed link rigging solution and allows you to safely connect to your rigging gear using a D-ring shackle. And it is also compatible with both Haas and Roller Fair leads. The big difference between this and the ProLink is with the splicer, you're actually replacing the thimble on your winch line. So you're going to have to remove your existing thimble, and then thread your winch line through this to replace it. Don't worry, I'll show you in this video how to do that. All right, let's talk for a minute about closed system winching. So closed system winching is a winching technique using rigging comprised entirely of closed link hardware. So that hook that came on my winch line from the factory does not qualify as a closed system, even though it's got that uh, little safety latch metal thing that's supposed to help it stay closed. That doesn't work, and when loads shift, especially when there ends up being slack in the line, uh, hooks are known for failing and coming loose during recovery operations. So by eliminating the winch hook and moving to something like the uh, ProLink or the Splicer in this case or any of the other Factor 55 closed system products, it creates a closed system using a D-ring shackle and whatever it is you're connecting your winch line to. In this case, uh, I'm connecting here to a tree saver, right? So uh, it doesn't matter if the load shifts, if there's slack in the line, uh, this closed system will remain closed throughout the entire recovery procedure. And that's what's important. All right, so attaching your ProLink to your winch line is as simple as inserting the safety thimble into the body of the ProLink. It'll be held into place with this double shear uh, titanium pin held in with a snap ring. So grab your snap ring pliers or whatever creative way you have of removing snap rings. Pull out that titanium pin, put in your uh, rope eye, and then replace the pin. Uh, it's actually quite that simple. Now, don't forget to um, reinstall the snap ring. And uh, it's super important to remember to push your snap ring down into its little groove. You need to make sure it's well seated into its home so that it does not come out on you. Um, and that's it. It's, uh, it's pretty simple, and you're, uh, you're ready to go do some work with this guy. Now, as far as installing uh, your D-ring shackle, it's about as intuitive as you can imagine. There's really only one way to do it, and that's it right there. Um, from this point, you can attach whatever ropes or straps you need to to get your job done. All right, with the splicer, we're actually going to insert the rope directly through, and it's going to take the place of your thimble. Uh, so uh, you'll need a rope with a... Uh, properly tapered end and uh, you know you can shove that through however makes sense for you I've seen people just be able to push it right through snake it through or use an ink pen or a fib or something to move it through um, I found just taping a small piece of uh, 550 cord just makes it <laughs> really simple because that 550 cord goes through nice and easy 
and then uh, and then out through the other side and basically you're just going to uh, feed the winch rope through right behind it so again use whatever method works for you but um, that's the way I chose to do it all right so you want to make sure you have a sufficient length of tail to bury into your winch line to hold it securely there's some formulas but really if you just think about using 18 inches you should be fine you can never have too much tail but you can have too little so we're gonna stab it through itself and to do that I'm gonna use this basket wire fib uh, you can use a variety of fibs or uh, or even I've seen people take uh, you know ink pens or whatever um, this is a great little device it uh, works like those Chinese finger cuffs and uh, and holds the line for you and gives you the ability to uh, to work with it easier so uh, up close to the eye you know measuring out again that I've got about 18 inches of uh, tail that I'm going to be working with get it pushed through the middle of, uh, of one side uh, you want equal strands on both sides and then just pull it through tight to the splicer now that's one pass through I've seen people do uh, one pass through and then and then bury I've seen people do three um, I've seen people not do a pass through and go straight to a bury the general um, consensus is one pass through should be plenty uh, and then you know just skip a couple of strands and go straight into the berry process where you're basically slipping the rope inside of itself now if you don't do that first pass through uh, and you just bury straight out of the splicer um, you run the risk of it being able to sort of inchworm its way out um, over time but when you have the pass through it acts sort of like a lock and uh, and locks it in and like I said there are some people I know uh, that I that are um, fairly confident that one uh, pass through will be plenty um, and then I know people that do three just because it makes them feel extra safe so use whatever makes sense for you but uh, I'm gonna do one and then bury this and basically what I'm doing is just feeding this through and uh, as far as I can so that I know that once I straighten it back out that that tail will be completely buried so um, just scrunch up that rope until you've um, got the ability to, to do that so um, there we go I've got um, my fib removed now and uh, I'm just gonna basically tighten this thing up and then milk it back down which will cause um, that tail to kinda get sucked up inside the line and like I said make sure you have a properly tapered um, in that's pretty important I'll do another video showing you how to taper uh, your end if you're going to cut off a thimble off of an existing rope. And that's what it should look like, and you can see how it tapers nicely into the rope diameter. What I like about this design is how it basically just simplifies the connection. It removes the, uh, the thimble off the rope, it removes the shear pin, and it's just a straight, direct connection. Now you can connect a D-ring shackle two ways. Um, you can do it with the hoop end of the shackle uh, through the splicer like this, um, or you can uh, also do it um, the way you saw on the ProLink, uh, which is the pin end through. Uh, one thing that's important though is it is possible to side load a shackle. Uh, you do not want to do that. Um, and as a matter of fact, it's even written on the side of the splicer, do not side load. All right, so keep that load straight and you'll be good to go. All right, so here the two are side by side, the splicer and the ProLink. The ProLink uses the existing uh, line eye or thimble for your winch cable. The splicer uses your synthetic winch rope only and is a direct connection uh, eliminating um, any additional parts. So one thing I like to do uh, is I use a chafe uh, guard or rock guard. It's just a nylon webbing. Uh, works out really well on the splicer. I can just suck it all the way up into the splicer. So a completely unnecessary step and uh, one that I decided to go ahead and do is to um, use RTV sealant just to seal that rope to protect it from uh, the elements and uh, UV uh, damage. But again, completely unnecessary, but with the chafe guard and that and the winch line cover on the winch drum, uh, I'm completely protected. Pretty cool. 
All right, so that's it. Now you've seen the ProLink and the Splicer from Factor 55. Two very great products, two very different ways of connecting, uh, but one of them you'll find probably makes the most sense for your particular situation. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I'll be happy to help you sort out uh, which is the right product for you or help you with any installation tips that I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.